The constant debate of welfare has made its way to the forefront of political headlines. We have over 313 million people in the United States, and 15 million of them depend on welfare checks from the government to help them with necessities such as food, water, and shelter. While many families desperately need these provisions, the debate lies on how much they need and how it's given to them. As taxpayers, you and I who have a job, we fund many of these governmental programs that provide provisions to these families, and many believe some of these programs are enabling. This same group would argue that instead of creating ways to get low-income families out of the hole and up on their feet, the governmental programs encourage and enable them to stay on welfare and collect free checks paid by taxpayers. On the same token, there are programs such as the Welfare to Work program that have made statistically significant positive change. The law, signed by President Clinton in 96, has transformed the way the nation helps its neediest citizens. Gone is the promise of a government check for parents raising children in poverty. In its place are 50 state programs to help those parents get jobs. In the 12 years since, the caseload peaked to 5.1 million families in 1994, and millions have left the welfare rolls for low-paying jobs. For example, Mary Bradford was 45 in 1996, with three children between 11 and 25, when she traded welfare for a job filing orders at Victorian Trading Company. Ten years later, she's now a production supervisor, and her earnings have more than doubled from $7 an hour that she made in 1996. All in all, as American citizens, there is a consensus that there's a responsibility to help and provide for those in need. The question lies in how to help those people and what is the best way to help them move forward. Take the Choose Your Stance quiz and tell us where you stand on the current welfare situation in the United States.